I'm going to show you how I fixed um, an LG uh, 42 LV 5500 LED TV. Um, that's my model number right there. The AUSYLJR model. Um, what was happening was, um, well, it would turn on and click. Um, you would hear a click, and the click is this relay right here on the power supply. Um, but the backlight LED, it didn't turn on. Um, and um, I was able to find a service manual for the TV and a schematic for the main board here. I never did find a schematic for the power supply, but you don't really need it. The, the service manual does a really good job. Um, one of the things... The service manual does here is tells you that if you take the power supply cable off the main board and you short two pins um, a power on pin and a LED drive on pin um, what would happen so that was removing this this cable here and then shorting two pins in the cable with a piece of wire um, the uh, I could see the backlight come on uh, bright so I knew um, the power supply was working. I was also able to um, probe and test um, some of the voltages that are listed here, and everything was there, the 12 volt, the 24 volt, the 3.5 volt. So I knew the power supply in this case was working. Um, underneath here is the panel control board. They call it TCON. Um, there's also a way to test that. Um, and I'll link these uh, service manuals um, in um, in the description of the video here, but here there's a uh, test point 44, um, which is just a teeny little via um, behind the connector. I think it's the eighth pin down, but I actually found it out on a resistor R4. 12, which is just moved over here a little bit and so I was able to solder a wire onto there instead of that micro via right there and then you had to um, solder a wire under here and bring 12 volts from your power supply and that caused the panel to um, so with these disconnected 12 volts to the board and that TCON it caused the panel to cycle between red green blue and white um, so basically I was able to test this board and show that um, the panel worked and I was able to test the power supply so that kind of left something wrong with the main board. Um, there's a bunch of power local power supplies over here is a 1.5 volt 2.5 volt supply um, a 3.3 they call it normal a 0 0.9 volt supply a 5 volt normal and another 5 volt supply and um, all those supplies were active. I've had bad caps on other um, devices go bad, but everything was working. Um, but as I did more and more internet searching, um, I found out that, well, I'm gonna take this off and show you. Over here is um, a small microprocessor and it kinda controls um, the controls the activity on the board. It doesn't do much with the video, but it handles like the um, the front panel buttons and the remote control and um, the buttons were actually working. It would turn on and off with the button and the little red LED would come on here. Um, so this, this little guy was interpreting the signals, but we wouldn't get anything on the panel or the video. So what I did is, well, from the back of the board, um, I removed uh, these small little clips. You actually have to I don't know if you can see this, but you have to squeeze squeeze the um, little plastic things together and then push them out from the back side. Um, and with this removed, we find um, two chips on here. I didn't look at this, but it's probably a big flash memory. And then this is the main video control chip. Um, it's They call it the BCM Broadcom, um, Broadcom video processor. And this chip right here is a... Um, well, they call it a ball grid array. So underneath there, instead of the pins being out here on the edge like this one are, those are the pins, there's hundreds of little solder joints underneath this part. 
and um, this board is actually kind of curved a little bit. They don't have um, much mechanical support for the middle of the board, and I think, and the, this part also gets really hot, and um, um, so I think with the board flexing and the temperature of the part, um, it's under heat and cool cycles, and I think basically what happened is there was mechanical stress on the part, and um, and one or more solder joints cracked on the little balls. So what I did to fix it was I have a uh, electronics heat gun here. It gets pretty hot, and basically what I did is I heated heated this chip up. I don't know how long I did it for six eight minutes. Um, and if you get it hot enough, you can actually remove the chip, but that's not something you want to do because you'll never get what you have to do. What they say is reball um, the chip, and uh, um, and then resolder it on. And that's an advanced thing. You could send your board to a board repair house, and they could reflow this chip or reconnect it. But all I did was basically heat it up, and I put a little. Um, straight down pressure on it with um, my tip of my pliers. I didn't want to move it, but I heated it up pretty good. Um, and uh, so hopefully if there was a cracked solder joint, it reflowed or reconnected itself. Um, and um, after I did that, um, I'm going to show you. Let's get this where you can see here. Can we see the part? Not really. So um, when you remove this, this is a uh, sticky, sticky uh, pad that is a heat sink to join between that guy and that guy. So you got to make sure you put that on right. Um, and when we put this on here, we want to—we don't want to press down here and flex the board um, more. So what I'm going to do is lift the board up and make sure that I'm putting my finger on the back of the board. So I'm pressing against it locally instead of flexing the whole board. Two. Three and now, of course, as I was moving that heat sink around, those things weren't falling out, but one fell out. So I gotta find it. Hopefully, this won't take too long. Aha, I found it. We'll see how long that was. Hopefully, not too long. So, pressing with my finger underneath it. All right. Then we've got a couple. I think some they took the people that uh, this was a, a free TV uh, off one of my uh, next door things. Somebody was like, where do you take it to recycle it or does someone kind of get it for free? And I'm like, well, I'll give it a shot and see what I can do. Because um, there was a missing screw here. That, and I think that maybe they took it in for service and they told them your main board is bad and it would be $300 to fix it. And they're like, well, I'll buy a new TV then, which... Probably if I had to pay $300, I would buy a new TV too. But having some electronics background, I thought, well, actually I thought this was going to be a bad power supply or, um, you know, one of the supplies or a bad semiconductor on here. Um, there is, uh, on eBay, I found um, a main board they would sell you a service where you could send your board in and they would fix it for you. Um, okay, so I've got the heat sink back on. Um, plug it in. And. Out of the woods, yeah. Ah. The only station that puts our cheap I unplugged it when it was on, but check, check this out.
Our team brings you the news happening now. That probably just stopped because my I'm using a paper yep. clip for an antenna. So there you go. I did not do anything except what we would call. Um, yeah, let me mute this thing. I think this remote would have a mute, right? There it is. Um, I did have to. They did. It didn't come with a remote, but I found a replacement remote on um, eBay for ten bucks. So yeah, that was easy. Um, it also has a second remote called a motion remote. So like when you're on the internet, you can move a cursor around the screen and click easier. Um, but basically a really good picture. Um, and all I had to do was uh, reflow that main video control processor uh, underneath this big heat sink right here. Um, I've seen things on eBay where they said um, you could put this whole board, take all these connectors off and put it in the oven at 350 degrees uh, for like 10 minutes. I don't think that's, personally, I do not think that's a good idea um, because you've got lots of plastic parts on here, things that may not enjoy being at 350 degrees. Um, I saw a video of a board that was like warped like a big kind of like like a C shape and I he's like how did it get this way well I think before it got sent to him for repair they put it in the oven and it warped like that so it's better just to reflow and heat up that one chip um, I'm gonna link to the service manual and the schematic the service manual is really good if you go through the troubleshooting steps um, you can you know figure out if it is your power supply or this control board down here um, but um, yeah hopefully this will help somebody Ciao.